Good morning, church. What a great day it is to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Man, it's so good to see each and every one of you here today, and I, I'm glad you all look nice and dry. I know that was quite a rain on Friday. Um, some of you knew and have been praying for us. We were going to be doing a youth camping trip on Friday and Saturday, and uh, it was pretty uh, rainy. We had that tornado watch. We said, we're not going camping, but we met over at the Family Life Center, and we actually had about 25 come out to hear the gospel and, and play some games and have some good food. So praise the Lord. He is good. Amen. Amen. So good to see you this morning. Just want to give you that update. Just so encouraging to me. Uh, If you're a guest with us today, we just want to say welcome and and thank you so much for joining us. If you're on our live stream too, please reach out to us. We'd love to give you more information on the church and we just appreciate you joining us today on that connection card in the bulletin. That's the best way for you to let us know how we can be praying for you and we would love to pray for you. So please let us know your prayer requests or praises on that connection card. Also at the bottom of that connection card, it says, do we have your email address? If you're not getting, currently getting those email address, our emails from the church office during the week, go ahead and put your email address there, and we're, we'll make sure that you're added to that list, okay? Uh, the church library is, is open every Sunday now, starting at 9 o'clock. That's over at the Family Life Center, so make sure to get in there and use those resources. Uh, this evening, we will be having our youth and children's ministries from 6 to 7 over at the Family Life Center. If you know of any students who'd like to come join us, please encourage them to come as we study God's Word and have fun together. Uh, tomorrow, we do have the grocery ministry, and we're still just going out. Right now, we have a team of about 10 that are involved going out and taking food in Jesus' name and just encouraging and ministering to the community. If you're interested in helping out or have questions, feel free to contact me. We're still taking food donations during the week, or if you feel led to give financially towards the ministry, we're often going out and buying a lot of food to take to those in need. Uh, But again, that's tomorrow, and we'll be meeting at 9 o'clock to go out uh, to minister to the community, and we meet at 9 o'clock over at the Family Life Center. This Wednesday... We're continuing to have our live stream prayer and devotional service at 1 o'clock on our Facebook page, so be sure to tune in for that. We always have the replay, too, so if you missed it that day, you can come back and watch it on our Facebook page. Uh, This is an important announcement, um, not really for the 8 o'clock service, but just for you to know for Sunday school. uh, The first Sunday of May, we'll be making a slight adjustment to our current schedule, so the Sunday school times will be a little bit different. Uh, So beginning May 2nd, we'll still have the early service here at 8 o'clock here in the sanctuary. We'll have Sunday school starting at 9.15, and then we'll have our worship service over in the gymnasium at 10.45, and that's just to close that gap. We've been having a little bit too much of a gap between the services and Sunday school. So 8 o'clock service here, uh, 9.15 Sunday school, and then 10.45 worship in the gymnasium. And we just want to thank you for your patience and for your flexibility. On the very back table, we still have a bunch of those You're Invited cards, gospel ministry tracts, and Bibles. Just encourage you to take those, use those to minister to others, or if maybe you don't don't even have a Bible, come and grab one from that back table right over there. Uh, Before we go to the Lord in prayer today, uh, Suzanne had an announcement for us. Good morning. Y'all hear me okay? Um. I just wanted to announce on the behalf of the mission committee and the finance committee that we are going to have a called business meeting on Wednesday, May 5th um, at 7.15. And this will be a short business meeting, but the purpose is for us to vote on the recommendation from those two committees to give monthly support to Jay Taylor as she leaves on her two-year mission trip to Alaska. Um, So we've already sent out a letter, but I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. So what we're um, proposing is that we, as a church body, are going to offer her support of $300 a month for the entire time that she is there. So this is above and beyond any personal gifts that y'all give or any extra gifts. So that's just for her to know, for her planning purposes, that's what she can count on as a bare minimum from our church. I know it's actually going to be much more because... She's already gotten gotten, um, a lot of gifts. So I just wanted to clarify that. So that's what we're voting on, and that is Wednesday, May 5th. Um, And I also wanted to clarify, because when we were meeting as a mission team, 
Um, I have to be careful not say committee because I guess committee is the wrong word. As a mission team, we were realizing that the letter was a little bit confusing because we were confused and we were the ones who wrote it. So, <laughs> um, so we are having a missions emphasis in the month of May for Jade. And that is similar to the idea that we have like maybe for Lottie Moon at Christmas or Annie Armstrong at Easter. We are going to give throughout the year as a church body, but for the month of May, this year and next year, because she'll be gone for two years, that will be our Jay Taylor Alaska Mission Emphasis Month. And anything that is given that month will be above and beyond what we have committed as a church out of our budget. So that's the same idea that we do for our Lottie Moon and Annie Armstrong, but we just wanted to clarify that because some of the verbiage in that letter was a little bit um, unclear. So the meeting is Wednesday, May 5th at 7.15. That is a little bit later to allow our youth and children's workers to be there as well. But if you have any questions, you can speak with me, um, Pat Rogers, Charla Thompson, or Rick Renfro. We're all on the um, mission team. So thank y'all. Thank you, Suzanne. Well, let's go to the Lord together in prayer. Lord, we do this thank you for another day that you have blessed us with, for this time that we can come and gather in your house, Lord. I thank you for each of these here, my brothers and sisters. It's such a joy to see them and talk to them and catch up with them, Lord. It's just such a blessing to have them here with us. We thank you for those who are tuning in on the live stream today, too, Lord. Let's pray you continue to uh, watch over them and protect them. Lord, we thank you for this time that we have to come and to worship you and, and praise and song. And I just thank you for Brother Mark. Just pray you be with him, Lord, as he comes and leads us in worship. Father, I thank you for Pastor Greg, Lord, for the message that you have put on his heart this day. Lord, may you just speak through him by your spirit as he brings your word to us. May we open our ears to hear what you have for us this day. May we apply your word, Father, to our lives. Lord, use us to be a light for you, to share the good news of your son Jesus to all those in this community and around the world. Lord, we again just thank you for this time. We thank you for your love for us. And we thank you most of all for your son Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Good morning. It's great to be with you. So glad that you are here this morning. I just want to say a word of thanks to the missions team and the personnel, I mean, and the, the finance, budget finance team. Um, and every one of you, um, it's just such a blessing to see what God's doing in Jade's life. And we look forward to hearing uh, what he does. Before we worship this morning, Galatians 2.20, um, for I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ who lives within me in the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Since Jesus came into my heart, I have a reason to live. Amen. Let's stand together and sing and worship the Lord. What a wonderful change in my life had been wrought Since Jesus came into my heart I have light in my soul for which long I have sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy are my soul like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure Since Jesus came into my heart And no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway obscure Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart there's a light in the valley of death now for me since Jesus came into my heart I am back of the city beyond I can see Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart 
since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart, I shall go there to dwell in that city I know. Since Jesus came into my heart, and I'm happy, so happy, as onward I go, since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul, like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Amen. And since he's come into my heart, I can trust him with everything. Amen. Let's sing together, Trusting Jesus. Simply trusting every day. Trusting through the stormy way, even when my faith is small. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Trusting as the moments fly. Trusting as the days go by. Trusting Him, whatever befall. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Brightly doth His Spirit shine into this poor heart of mine. While He leads, I cannot fall. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Trusting as the moments fly. Trusting as the days go by, trusting Him, whatever befall, trusting Jesus, that is all. Trusting Him while life shall last, trusting Him till earth be past, till within that jasper wall. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Trusting as the moments fly. Trusting as the days go by. Trusting Him, whatever befall. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Sing together the love of God. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond. The highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win his errant child. He reconciled and pardoned from. How measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels song. When years of time shall pass away and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall, when men who hear 
refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call God's love so sure it shall endure all measureless and strong redeeming grace from Adam's race to saints and angels song oh love of God how rich and pure how measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels song could we with the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made where every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry nor could the scroll contain the whole though stretched from sky to sky O love of God how rich and pure how measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints and angels Let you in on a little secret. This is somebody's favorite song. Amen. And I look forward to being in heaven. We shall behold him. The sky shall unfold, preparing his entrance. The stars shall applaud him with thunders of praise. The sweet light in his eyes. Shall enhance those awaiting, and we shall behold him, then face to face, and we shall behold him, we shall be. In all of his glory, oh, we shall behold him, we shall behold him face to face, our Savior and Lord. shout of his coming the sleeping shall rise from their slumbering place and those who remain shall shall in 
changed in a moment, and we shall behold Him, then face to face. Yes, we shall behold Him. Yes, we shall behold Him face to face in all of His glory. Oh, we shall behold Him. Yes, we shall Bibles with me today to Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 15 is our text. It's Exodus 17, 8 through 15, and good morning again to each of you. So glad you are here, and welcome to those who have joined us on live stream. We're glad that you have taken the time this morning to be with us as well. If you found your place in God's Word and you're able, please stand for me as we read, stand with me as we read together. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men, go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek, while Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, while Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, The Lord is my banner. Let's pray together. Lord, we are grateful for the opportunity to gather this morning, whether it be those who are sitting in these pews, those who are in their homes watching the computer. We pray for your spirit to move in our midst. We pray that your voice would be heard today, that you would speak to us through scripture. 
We pray that we would be encouraged as we look to the example that Moses gives us. We pray, too, that we would also recognize your hand upon our lives, that we would rely upon it, and that, Lord, we would celebrate it. Lord, thank you for the day. We pray again that your spirit would speak. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. You know, most people get where they want to go with a car. Probably everyone here, you may have been with your husband or wife, some of you by yourselves, you got here this morning by driving a car. The power, the force of the car took you where you wanted to go. All the person has to do, all we have to do, is position ourselves in the right place. In other words, if the car is in the garage and we're in the house, we have not positioned ourselves to get where we need to go. The problem is not, in that case, the individual's inability to make the trip. The problem is that we are not in the right relationship with the car, with that instrument, with the power source to make the trip. And I think about that as we look at our Christian lives. Many of us stay stuck in Christian life because we're not in the right place where the provision of God, where the force of God, where the engine that God places within us is able to take us to the place that God wants us to be. It's not that we don't have the power. We certainly do if we've aligned ourselves with God through Jesus Christ. It's not that we don't know the guidelines because we've been given those as well through the Word of God. The real question becomes, have we become properly aligned with God? Today's scripture gives an example of what it means to be properly aligned. And, and, and also we see in these verses how to win the battle. Four things this morning I want us to take from this passage. Number one, recognize the need for God's presence. So Moses said to Joshua, choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. Moses was making a point recognizing God's presence was going with them into this battle. And he makes this statement, preparing for battle by his leadership, preparing the Israelites to go out and take on Amalek and his forces in the power and strength of God. Moses recognizes the necessity of God in this, this uh, undertaking. Now, once again, we see mentioned in this passage the rod of God. The rod, as we've discussed, particularly last week, was a powerful symbol to the people of Israel. Moses was not foolish enough to go to battle relied on his own abilities. He's, he wasn't saying, follow me. He was saying, follow the Lord. We are in the presence of the Lord. Moses effectively encouraged those fighting with the promise of God's presence in battle. Now this was really important because this was the first battle that Israel was to face. But there were many more to come and he was setting precedent. The precedent was that God will go for us, before us in battle. He will go with us in battle. We will not go unless he says go and we will not go if he says to go. The story I'm about to share with you first appeared in the January 29, 2003 edition of the Washington Post. And it was entitled, Peekaboo's Problem. Do you know who I'm talking about? Some, most of you will. Peekaboo Street. She was an Olympian, famous skier. Well, the article notes that she was much more than a famous skier. In the midst of her Olympic work, in the, midst of, in the midst of her worldwide travel, the article says she also went to school and she became a nurse. And here's what the article records for us. Early in her nursing career, she was assigned to work briefly as an intensive care unit nurse in a large metropolitan hospital. She did outstanding work, but there was a slight problem. The head nurse had to tell her not to answer the phone in the ICU because of the confusion it caused when the callers were connected to the ICU and they would hear Peekaboo say in her most professional voice, Peekaboo, ICU. 
What a story. Can you imagine that? We can imagine, but <laughs> somebody, somebody help Veronica. <laughs> we can imagine. The only problem is that story is not true. There's not a hint of truth to it. Peekaboo is not a nurse. She never has been. She gets the joke, though, and she gets a good laugh with others. But since childhood, she has been teased about the name that her parents gave her. And, and they got that name from an Idaho town that takes its name from a Native American word meaning shining waters. Well, that was a cute story, and I actually told it for a purpose. Moses knew the importance of establishing spiritual leanings. He was very clear. He was very careful from the start, this first battle that they were facing, to, to get the story straight. Israel, you are not going out to this battle in your own strength. You are not strong enough to take on the armies that will come against you who are mightier than you are. You're not going in my strength. God has used me to lead, but He is the leader of you, His people. And he wanted that story straight in their mind so there would be no question. They would face many battles to come. They would face many struggles and many trials. Moses was setting the record straight right from the start. We need to recognize the need that we have in God's presence. And that's our first point. Number two, we need to rely on the source of true power. In verse 11, whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. We, we, I want us to think about this picture of Moses raising his hands. I want you to go back with me even a week to, to remember the staff that we spoke of. Moses, staff in hand, raising his hands before the Lord. And his actions were a symbol of appeal to God for help and for enablement. Moses did more than recognize the need of God when the battle started, he relied on the power of God through prayer. And that's the picture. Moses raising his hands to God. God Almighty, won't you have your hand of protection and victory and strength upon my people? And that's the picture that we get as Moses raised his hands. Prayer is never the least we can do. I think I said something. Y'all need to comment back. Prayer is never the least thing that we can do. Amen. Amen. In the 12th chapter of the book of Acts, the church is under the persecution of King Herod. He has already killed James, the brother of John. He has Peter in prison. He wanted to do the same thing to Peter. Peter was sleeping. He was in the middle of the night waiting for his execution. And a bright light flooded the prison. Peter was being watched by four guards. Yet an angel appeared to Peter and said, Peter, get up. And when he did, the, the, the locks on his wrists and ankles, those chains, they just fell away. Peter thought that he was dreaming. But soon the cell door opened and Peter followed the angel down a corridor through an iron gate, the scripture tells us, opened in front of them of its own accord. And so Peter had been set free miraculously. He found himself on the street. The angel that had led him out of the prison who had freed him disappeared. And so Peter went to the home of where some of his friends were praying. They were holding an all-night prayer meeting so that he might be released. They had no power against Herod, but prayer powerfully was answered this night. Suddenly, Peter was knocking at their door. And one of, the, one of the women who was praying there came to the door and in her excitement at hearing Peter, she left him standing outside. She rushed to tell the rest of the group, Peter is here, just like we have prayed. But here's the interesting part. They didn't believe her. You know the story. They did not believe that it was Peter. They had been praying all night for Peter's deliverance, yet didn't believe that he had been delivered. What does that tell us about prayer? Because they're not the first people to pray for something and then become shocked when it took place. Many times we pray and we don't even expect anything to happen. Are we praying because there's power in prayer and we want to unleash that power? Or are we praying to pacify ourselves? Are we praying to be able to tell other believers, we prayed? Do we expect when we pray, we often think about prayers being the last resort as a last ditch effort. 
But prayer for us is the greatest resource we have. We should always pray first. We need to recognize the need. We need to rely upon the Lord. Number three, we need to relate to godly people. Look in verse 12 with me. But Moses' hands grew weary. So they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, while Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side, so his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Now you have the picture already. Moses was standing in prayer, beseeching the Lord's intervention. And right in the first words of verse 12, but Moses' hands grew weary. Have you ever grown weary? You know, it's interesting to me, even in Scripture, we are told, do not grow weary in what? In doing good. And so obviously God knows something about us, that we will grow weary at times. So what's the answer? We look at Moses. Moses has been a great leader to this nation. He has had his struggles. Maybe he was weary because of those struggles, in fact. But I want us to take, take a couple ideas from this, a couple points. And one is this. Even though we may have been around a long time, there's still room for help. Amen? There are times, even though we may have wisdom, even though we may have standing, even though we may have done a great job and whatever it is, there is still room for assistance. And that's what is taking place here. Don't think that, we can't think that our age allows us to go it alone. Aaron and her stepped up to help Moses. They got him a seat. They took a stone and put it under him where he could sit. Aaron held up one arm. Her did the other. And the result was his hands remain stable. There are times when we need someone to come alongside us so that we remain stable. I want us to think about those times of trial, those struggles that we go through where we need believers to come alongside us and hold up our hands. There was a sermon entitled, The Story from the Iron Gate. Clarence J. Forsberg had this, this sermon. And he goes back telling about a story that Bishop McConnell had told about something happening in a tiny fishing village in New England. All the ships of the village, all the boats, I should say, went out. They did their fishing. A storm blew in on them unexpectedly. It was a terrible storm. And all the little boats made it back into the harbor but one. And this one boat, it was piloted by a man named John. He had almost reached the mouth of the harbor when, when a big wave came up and just broke his boat up, just crashed it against the rocks, threw John up on the rocks where he could barely hold on for his life. There was a tiny ledge there for him. His friends had seen what had happened. There wasn't anything they could do about it. It was growing dark. The seas were high. All they could do was wait. They built a bonfire on shore and kept it burning all night. And every once in a while, someone would throw a cap up in the air, just hoping that John, the old man, would see it. And at last, dawn began to break and the winds began to die down. They put out in their boats and were able to get close enough to rescue John and bring him back to shore. When they had got John warmed up, when they had given him something to eat, they asked him what it was like out there. And I, I want to read what he says. Well, it was the longest night of my life. I made out pretty well at first, but then a big wave came along and flattened me out, and I felt myself slipping. I was worn out. I was ready to give up. My old father went down at sea, and I decided my time had come. But just as I was ready to let go, I looked through the darkness and saw somebody's cap going up in the air. And I said to myself, if there's somebody who cares enough about old John to stay out on a night like this, I guess I'm not going to quit yet. Just then the wind seemed to ease up and I got a fresh hold. And well, here I am. What is the picture for us? We need to be interconnected interconnected with God's people. We need to hold them up in our prayers. 
We show our kindness. We show our support to them when we are present with them in times of need. We show sympathy. We show our love. We show our care when we are with them in times of sorrow. Recognize the need. Rely on God's power. Relate to godly people. Surround yourself with them. And number four, remember the source of victory. Verses 14 and 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the years of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, The Lord is My Banner. God had been present in the victory and now the victory was theirs to celebrate and God gives instructions to Moses. Moses was to write what happened down. He was to record it as part of history on the, scroll, on the scroll. He was also to tell Joshua what was taking place. Because picture this, Joshua is down doing in the valley the battle. He's taking care of the battle. And he probably even recognized there were times when we were having great success, but there were times when the armies of Amalek were making progress against us. Moses was told by God, make sure Joshua knows what was taking place. Why is that? Joshua will be the very next leader of the Israelites. He needs to know the power of God, the power of prayer, the power of that relationship. Also, Israel needed to know this history for the many battles to come where they could look back and look upon what was written and see how God delivered them when they were too afraid to fight, when they thought that they were overwhelmed by a larger, greater, more powerful army. They could look back and see the power of God upon them. To win the coming battles, they had to stay relying upon the one who would give victory. The Israelites then celebrated the victory. Moses built an altar. He called it in, in the Hebrew, Yahweh Nisi. Yahweh Nisi. The Hebrew means what we read here, the Lord is my banner. The Hebrew word from which Nisi is formed means standard or ensign, such as a battle flag in our song, Here I Will Raise My Ebenezer. That is that, that same picture, raising that flag. And two meanings emerge from this passage. The first is this, the Lord was the rallying point for Israel. He is to be our rallying point. He is to be our banner, that to which we come to. And secondly, Nisi may refer to Moses' rod. We spoke, we've spoken of the rod several times. And the instrument of the Lord in the hand of one who was truly an instrument of the Lord. Moses was being used by God. He was his instrument. The presence of, the God, of God was right in the hand of Moses. We can say the Lord is my banner when we become instruments of the Lord. I'm going to make a statement now that will shock some of you. In fact, some of you may rise up in strong opposition here it is. I'm glad Bill Haynes isn't in here right now. Pro wrestling is staged. <laughs> you know, before the wrestlers ever go out, it has been, you know, you might want to plug your ears if this is really bothering you. It has been predetermined who will win. These, these contenders go through the battle for entertainment purposes. And... You think I'm wrong? Years ago, there was a change. It wasn't, the, it wasn't the World Wrestling Federation anymore. It was the World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE. The point of the battle is not to decide who will win, but to give a crowd, the crowd a show. Now, here, here's what I want you to see. This is really, I think, important for us. The winner of the match does not battle for victory but from victory. There's a big difference, isn't there? The winner of the battle, the winner of this fight, doesn't battle for that victory. He's battling from victory because he's already been told, you will be the winner here. He battles knowing that he's already won. 
I mean, what a great picture for Christians to, to hold on to. Those who belong to Christ have already won. God allows us to go through the Christian walk. He allows us to go through these battles, not to win the victory, but to show the world that He who is in us is greater than He who is in the world. Are you properly aligned with God? Well, that's how we're finishing up. Are you properly aligned with God? Acknowledge this day that every victory that we have, every victory you have as an individual, every victory we have as a church comes because we have been aligned properly with God. Let's stand and pray together. Lord, we are grateful for this opportunity to worship together, to study your word together. Lord, to be encouraged by the truth that we, we see in the life of Moses and in the history of the Israelites. Lord, may we be recorders of your great work in our lives. May we share it with our family members. May we share it with our brothers and sisters in Christ. May we write it perhaps in our journals so someone coming years down the road will see what God has done in the life of a loved one. Lord, I, I pray today that each of these words have been encouraging. I pray also that they are challenging to the point that we need to lift one another up. When those moments come that we feel like we are overwhelmed, may there be a Christian brother, a Christian sister, right at our side to do battle with us. Lord, I pray today, if you brought anyone here for decision, if anyone is logged in and watching the live stream that needs to make a decision for you, that you would touch their hearts, that you would bring conviction, and they would listen to your voice today. To be properly aligned with you, we know that begins with a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If you've never come into a relationship with God through Jesus' His Son, won't you do that today? Won't you, in your own words, pray and acknowledge that Jesus has died on the cross for you for your sin? That He offers forgiveness to you because He died in your place? That He also was not just left in the tomb, that He was resurrected to life? Won't you thank Him for that today? Won't you invite Him to come and live within your heart? The battle over sin was won by Jesus. We have that victory and we go forth in it if we accept the salvation that he offers. Lord, I pray if you have led anyone to make a salvation decision today, that you would now just receive them, that they would step out from where they're standing if they are in the sanctuary, that they would reach out to someone if they're watching the live stream, but perhaps call this church and let us know that a decision has been made. Lord, we pray for the moving of your Spirit. If there are other decisions, if there are prayer needs that you've led people to have and share today, give them courage to step out, perhaps to pray and kneel at the front of this sanctuary. Lord, we give you this time of invitation, praying for your Spirit to move in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. If you do have a decision to make. This is your opportunity to respond. We invite you. The altar is open for prayer. Well, we will be up front if you need someone to pray with to encourage you. If you have invited Jesus into your heart today, don't leave without sharing that decision. Share it this day. Mark. to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all I surrender Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. Make me Savior, holy thine. Let 
let me feel thy Holy Spirit, truly know that thou art mine. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. God's people said, Amen. Amen. God, thank you again for joining us today. May you go out and serve the Lord this week in His strength, in His power. Rely on Him. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.